In this video segment, we'll cover the setup of a auto attendant, a non-contact center auto attendant. And that's done in the admin console. And when you launch that, you get this screen right here. Then you come down here to auto attendants. This has a list of your existing auto attendants. And to make a new one, you click here on create auto attendant. And you need to give it a name. You need to choose a site. The site is not that important so long as you choose the one that matches the continent you're on. So if you're just operating one PBX in one continent of the world, then it, it kind of doesn't matter what site you choose, but it does does determine what uh, time zone that it chooses by default. All right. Uh, you usually assign a phone number, but there can be reasons why you might not. Your auto attendant might be an internal only uh, auto attendant. So um, I'm going to give mine a phone number and then the Extension number is assigned by default for you, but I like to change mine. And then, uh, let's see, do you want the auto tent to show up in your list of contacts on your uh, on your phones? You can shut that off if that's not necessary. The alternate menu, we'll come back to that later. The auto attendant profile, that is the schedule. So if you have not created a schedule, it will ask you to create a schedule. And let me just real quick, just show you what that looks like when you create a schedule. So the schedule is actually not on the main screen. You have to go over here to this little, what we call hamburger menu up here on the top left and come down here to schedules underneath auto attendance schedules. So if you haven't defined a schedule, um, the auto attendant will make you do one before you can continue that screen. And so here you're just going to define the hours of operation, right? Okay. Don't worry about exceptions or holidays right now. All right. So once you've got your schedule in place, or if you already have one, you chose it from the drop down. then there's the time zone. Like I said, the site that you choose uh, populates that by default, uh, but you could certainly change that. And you don't have to go back and edit the schedule. So the schedule automatically adjusts depending on what time zone you choose. All right, choose your local language for the auto attendant. And then down here, this is the mechanics. This is the actual options and verbiage. And there's uh, three, maybe four different modes of operation. There's open, closed, uh, lunch, and holiday. Uh, alternate is a little bit different animal. We'll talk about that at the end. Uh, so if you operate a schedule, if your schedule is defined as 24 seven, then all you need to do is just define an open hours menu. But if you do have open and closed hours then make sure you do both. If you forget what will happen is that when your calls come in after hours, whereas whatever you defined as not open will just simply be hung up on that. Nobody wants that. All right. So let's define open hours. Well, there's two different ways you can put in the wording. You can actually type it in using text-to-speech or you can upload an audio file. Now I don't have an audio file readily available, so let's do a text-to-speech. And it's actually not too bad. It's a little bit robotic, but it's not too bad. But what you type here is essentially what ends up the uh, audio message. So let me go ahead and type something out real quick and then we'll talk about it. All right, now this is what I've said, but in order to make what I said be true, I have to define it down here. And right before I leave this section, just let, let you know, you can also upload an audio file or in some really special cases, you may not have any greeting at all, but that's usually for some kind of special utility that you're trying to accomplish with the auto tenant. All right, so down here in the add key section, I've said, for instance, I said uh, to dial by name, press one. So I'm gonna go here, click add key. I'm going to choose one and I'm going to choose the function. So these are all the different functions you can have defined for the keys. Come down here to where I've got dial by name and I'm gonna say all sites, or you can limit the scope. You can say, nope, you can only just do dial by name for Sesame Street or Launchpad or whatever, but I'm gonna say all sites. All right, and then the other one is we said sales. So I'll click add key. And then here, what I'm gonna do is choose two. And then this is going to be a transfer. So this will be a transfer to uh, transfer to user or service. And in here you could either put one of the extensions, one of the call queues or ring groups, or you can even put an external phone number. Like you could actually type out a whole phone number and have that be, a, um, have that be a transfer point. 
if you want, right? So that actually transfers out of your auto tenant to some other uh, destination on the public telephone network. But anyway, I'm going to choose to do a transfer to, um, let's see, I've got some kind of a ring group here. Let's go with the sample ring group, okay? So that, let's just pretend that's my sales department, right? And then if for some reason you want to go straight to voicemail, turn that switch on right there, okay? All right, so now I've defined two different actions. Now there's also something here in edit settings. There's a few things in here. One is, remember I said in my script, if you know your party's extension, you can dial it at any time. I need to turn this on in order for that to be true. And then also here are a couple of things like how long do you want to wait for somebody to push a button before you move on? The other one is how many times do you want to replay the message? And then if the, you replayed the message once or twice, whatever you've defined and they don't do anything, well then what do you want to do next? You just want to hang up on them or maybe do you want to route the call say to the operator? So let's see who I've got for an operator here. Uh, how about Miss Piggy? Well, no, where's Miss Piggy? There she is. All right, so I can just route the call to her or again, just send it straight to her voicemail if I want. All right, so the two components there. Now, everything I've done here has defined the open hours behavior. Now, remember, if you have defined open hours, say nine to five or eight to six or whatever, if you don't also define a closed hour behavior, then when people call after hours, their call will simply be hung up on. So what you need to do is define closed hours. While it isn't necessary to save before moving on to closed hours, just because I'm a little extra cautious, I like to save first and then come back and change my closed hours. And essentially all I'll be doing is just putting in some kind of a greeting followed by some options, which could be different. You know, maybe when they press zero, instead of transferring to the uh, operator reception desk, maybe it transfers to security. All right, I'm gonna steal this right here. All right, and I'm gonna go here to closed hours. Use my speech to text, paste that. I'll just save myself some time here a little bit. Uh, you may dial your price extension at any time. Maybe in here I put in, we are currently closed. All right. And then maybe we don't let them call sales, but maybe we say, you know, to reach the security desk, they can, uh, they can dial zero, right? All right. Now, these options, again, are fresh. So these don't, you, whatever you define in your open hours options is one and two and zero and so forth, those don't automatically get carried over. So you have to redefine them here. So what I'm going to do here is make sure I allow people to be able to dial by extension. This is, again, going to be route to by default instead of Miss Piggy. This might be the security desk. I don't really have one defined, but let's go ahead and make it Fozzie Bear that he'll be my security guy, right? Okay, and then also here, I'm going to define really just option zero, which is transfer to Fozzie. All right, so transfer to Fozzie. All right, all right, so different options for the closed menu. Now you don't have to define lunch menu. It's only gonna matter if you've defined lunch hours in your schedule. Um, and then the other thing too is holidays is something you can define a custom set greeting and uh, uh, option behavior for holidays and the holidays have to be defined in your schedule. So when we made that schedule earlier, there was a place where you could define holidays. But if you don't define holidays, then you don't have to set up a holiday flow. All right, you could just simply just say, nope, Fourth of Independence Day, we're closed and it'll just play the closed greeting. All right, um, alternate, what alternate does is allows you to have a temporary alternate behavior that is just turned on and off as needed. So for instance, this section, Weekdays and holidays, open and closed, is all defined by a schedule. Alternate is not defined by a schedule. It's defined by this switch right here. So this would be an impromptu event, such as a weather event, which has caused you to not be able to maintain your operations as normal. So you would typically probably just set that up as needed. So for instance, here you might say, um, my alternate hours menu is gonna say, um, you know, this is ABC company, and maybe we're going to um, say that we're uh, currently, we're temporarily closed, maybe. All right, so this is my temporary behavior, right? And maybe I don't have any options, but I am allowing them to dial their party's extension because one of the nice things about cloud-based uh, phone system is that people can work from home.
right? So just because it was a weather event doesn't mean that people can't still be working. All right, so that's my alternate behavior, and that's only going to be in effect when I flip this switch on. All right, so alternate behavior is not affected by schedule. It's only affected by when I turn this switch on right here. All right, well, and then the last thing you want to do is save it, and I've pretty much shown you most of what you need to know to set up and maintain your auto tenant. Thanks for watching.